Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to welcome each one of you. In today's um, lectionary, it's pretty challenging. Um, in Deuteronomy, um, God does challenge us by saying that we have a choice. We can live life in accordance to God's will, or we can do our own um, life, and um, the choice is between life and death. And if we honor God and follow his commandments, then we will live. And in the last few weeks, as you know, um, we were called to be the light of this world. And I think Jesus really points out what it means today, in today's gospel. The challenge in today's gospel is that some people hear that and they think, oh, I, I have to do this all the time. And um, they feel condemned. Uh, the text speaks, I think, four times about hell. And so keep in mind, we are all saved, right? This is the context. Jesus already died for us and he loves us and there is no question about that. And so Jesus tells us how do we respond to what God did to us by loving our neighbor with our whole heart and with our whole mind. Please join me, please rise if you can, for the conf confession and forgiveness, which is found on page two. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have shunned the light that reveals the truth about us. We cling to worldly things rather than sharing the gifts of this earth. We trust ourselves above all. Save your people, O God. Sustain the rivers and trees that sing your praise and free us to live boldly in the light and truth of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The grace of God shines up on us, bringing salvation to the whole world. We are saved. Our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but according to God's mercy and grace in Jesus Christ. So remember that when you read today's gospel. We are saved. Renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may share God's peace with one another. Hymnal number 22, I will delight.
The Lord be with you all. You may turn to your celebrate insert for the prayer of the day. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And we are going to receive the offering. Our first reading today comes from Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, then I am commanding you today by the loving the Lord your God. Walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. 
But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before your, you life and death, blessings and curses. Church, choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to you, to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. And our second reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but rather people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another says, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have common purposes, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it is said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, You fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get anything out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it is said that you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her and his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said that it was to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely but carry out the vows that you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head that you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Please be seated, and at this time, I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. And we'll sing, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones do in me know, they only trust me in stone. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good. Now, we just celebrated a holiday this last week, right? And on Friday, what was that holiday? Anybody remember? Valentine's Day. Now, what is Valentine's Day all about? Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, Tristan. Okay, it's about giving, Avery. It's about love, yeah? Were you going to say that too? Yeah? So what, what kind of thing is Did you do something special at school that day? Or at daycare that day? What did you do? You made Valentine's, yeah? At school? That's awesome. Avery? That's awesome. Yeah, you made Valentine's Day boxes and shared those Valentines and candy with your classmates. That's awesome. Is that what you were going to add, too? Or did you do anything special different than that? No? Awesome. So that's all about Valentine's Day, right? That giving and sharing of that love that we shared with one another, right? Now, is it always easy to love everybody? No. Sometimes... Do you, have you ever had that where you really don't want to love somebody, right? Or have you ever been mad at somebody? I grew up with three older sisters, so I have definitely known that sometimes I've been angry with them, right? There's been moments where I was mad that I, that I didn't love them, right? Have you ever had moments like that? Yeah? Moments that you're not too proud of where you were angry? Now, in the story that I just read, Jesus is talking about one of our commandments, our fifth one. And he's talking about, have you heard that, that you're not, you're not supposed to murder people, right? You're not supposed to hurt people, right? And he takes it a little bit further. He says, I don't even want you to be angry with people. That's a lot to do, right? Jesus says, I don't want you to be angry with anybody. That's hard, right? Like we just said, it. he's like, oh yeah, that's hard, right? We get angry sometimes. But what I want you guys to remember is that when you feel that anger and you don't know where you're supposed to go, with those feelings of that, that you can always turn to Jesus with that, okay? Because his love that we talked about is for him, is for you forever, okay? I'm guessing she's not mad at you, is she? (laughs) No. (laughs) So I want you guys to remember that. How can we turn to God when we're angry? How, How can we talk to God? Anybody know? Yeah. That's exactly right. By saying prayers, right? They can turn to him and say, I know you don't want me to be mad, but I really am mad. And I want you to forgive me and help me not to be mad, right? And he'll do that with us, right? Because he loves us forever. That love is forever. Do you think we could try that now? Can we try that prayer together right now? Let's do that. Let's fold our hands. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the love that you give us. We thank you so much for being able to remember that. Even when we're happy or we're angry, we know that we can always turn to you and pray about it and know that you will be there with us to help us and guide us along that. Thank you for loving us always. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, it's also Jingle Change Day, so go ahead. You can grab a pot. You guys want to grab a pot? They're up here today. And Do you want to try it? Do you want to try?
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Every family has those stories that have been shared in your family a million times, right? The ones that they're retold, though, at every family gathering as if they're a brand new story to you, even though everybody you know already knows those by heart. For my family, there's always a story that my dad likes to share with us. And it's when he was fixing fence with my two oldest sisters. So it was a summer night, and my sisters were 10 and 7. So their role was to be driving the old truck along the fence line as my dad was in the back, taking the wire off of the back of the truck, fixing the fence as they went along. So they got the fence all fixed up, and my dad goes to get inside the truck to drive them home. He goes to grab the door handle, and the door's locked. And he yells at my sisters, you know, like, let's go, open the door so I can get in and take us home. And my two sisters apparently just sat there, pointing at the night sky and all of the mosquitoes that were around him. He, they did not want to let any of those into the truck, so they weren't going to let him in either. So I was only a baby when this story happened, but yet in my family it's retold so often that I know it by heart. And it feels like I was almost there, even though I know for certain I I wasn't. But I can picture it as if I was. Today's text, Jesus is using a similar rhetoric of recounting the past. He uses phrases like, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you have heard this, you've heard this, you know this, you've heard these stories. He is walking this crowd through the fifth and the sixth commandments that were given to Moses and the Israelites when they were delivered from the land of Egypt. You shall not murder and you shall not commit adultery. We've heard this story, right? We know these commandments. We can picture Moses in our minds holding the tablets on the mount. We have heard this story of ancient times. It's almost like we can picture it as if we were there. If you can't picture it in your mind, you can look over by Rossings and gales, and there is Moses standing there on the mountain with the tablets above them. We can see it as if we were there. So we have heard these commandments, but have we heard the full extent that these commands actually go to? Christ is really driving home the weight and the depth of these commandments here for us today. I don't know about you, but the first time that I actually read this text out loud was in our staff meeting this week, and even reading it out loud made me cringe a bit to know how assertive and how aggressive this is. This is Christ, and he is placing the full weight of these commandments on us here in our lectionary text today. Christ says that you've heard it said that you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment as well. We know that we should not murder. That's not a surprise to us. But yet Jesus is intensifying these commands. You think that you haven't broken the fifth commandment because you haven't killed somebody. Well, were you mad when the Packers and the Vikings didn't get into the Super Bowl? Were you mad that Nancy Pelosi ripped up Trump's State of the Union address? Or were you mad because Trump wasn't impeached? Were you mad because you didn't get the raise that you deserved? Have you ever been mad because someone got what you surely deserved? Christ says you are condemned for your anger and for your jealousy to the same judgment as murder. The root of the problem is your heart. With anger and resentment, you are idolizing yourself, your desires and your longings. I want my party in control of our country. I want my team to be the champion. I want my career to succeed. I want what you have. When Christ isn't in your conscience, your heart is set on these material things, on the I wants and the I deserves. 
This anger and this resentment becomes your living hell that you are living in. This is the devil at work in your life telling you that you need to become the master of your own world, that you deserve this, that you need to provide for yourself instead of believing that Christ will provide you with all that you need. When you don't have Christ on your conscience, you will never find peace. And Jesus doesn't stop there on us today. He continues intensifying these commands on us, going to the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her and his heart. You think because you haven't committed adultery that you haven't broken the sixth commandment. Christ says, have you even looked at someone lustfully? They are under the same judgment. And again, it comes back to the root of the problem, your heart. What is going on with your heart in the sixth commandment? Are you again looking to provide for yourself, replacing Christ as your conscience with lustful passions that the devil tries to convince you will fill your ego and your desires until it isn't enough and you go to the next person or the next the fifth and sixth grade pre-confirmation group, we've been walking through these commandments very slowly through this year. And in particular, we've spent a lot of time on this fifth commandment. And the last time we met, I heard just about every hypothetical situation that could exist under the stars. Well, what if this happens, or this happens, or this happens? What if it was an accident? What about what ifs? All of the what ifs. Our knee-jerk reaction is to look for a way out of these accusations that Christ is laying on us. And these youth did just like any of us want to do. We want to defend ourselves. We want to look for an escape, look for a loophole out of the depth of this. Except in this text, you can read it again as many times as you'd like, but Christ doesn't leave us with a loophole. Christ is taking these commandments that were given to Moses and he's intensifying them. Jesus isn't being legalistic or permissive. He is addressing the full weight of these commands and telling you how you have failed to complete them. There's no room for your defense. But as I always tell our fifth and our sixth graders, when we reach this hypothetical place, this isn't where Christ leaves you. This isn't where Christ stops. After all, we know very well that Jesus came for the sick, not for the well. I want to remind you who is speaking these words to you today. This is Christ speaking these words. The same Lord who was born to live among each and every single one of you. The same Lord who has cleansed the ten lepers the same Lord who was asleep on the boat in the midst of the stormy sea, unwavered by the crashing waves. The same Lord that we know as our shepherd, as Emmanuel, God with us. The one we know as the bread of life and the light of our world. The Lord who has come to save and to redeem. Christ is speaking to you here as your Savior and as your Redeemer. Christ leaves us with no room to run in this text. There is no escaping the full weight of our sin. And, but the reason I emphasize who is speaking to you here is because this isn't someone who has come to see you fail. This is not a judge who has come to accuse and leave you alone. This is the same Christ who names your sin but doesn't leave you there. Your anger that breaks the fifth commandment, your lustful eyes or your divorce that break the sixth commandment, that's not your identity with Christ. That is not where he leaves you. Christ says to you that I am yours and I will have the last word. Yes, you have broken these commandments and yes, they will accuse you. The devil always makes sure of that. But they do not have the last words on who you are. 
the same Lord who died upon the cross for all of these sins. He is still speaking this promise to you today that you are forgiven and that I am yours today and forever. The peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds forever. Amen. I invite you to please join in our song, Seek Ye First, on page 85C. At that point, we are going to uh, celebrate our milestones. And I'm going to read some names, and some of them I probably will not pronounce right. So please uh, let me know later uh, where I butchered your name. Reed Hansen and his family, please come up if you're here. Rindley Thorstedt, Hudson Entringer, Liam Ehlers, Lincoln Ehlers, Hudson Dirk Singh, Sang, Caleb, Caleb Johnson, Sawyer Opsal, Rowdy Seitz, Eleanor Van Dyke, and Alo Cook. If you are here, please come. <clears throat> can. Anyway, I think Lexi met with you in between the services. It's a great booklet that lifts up the diversity of creation. You know, our God created us in so many different shapes and forms, and so I think the trick is to learn to appreciate one another, even while we are very different. Let us pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your love and for your guidance. I ask you, please bless us as we celebrate your presence and guide us through each day. Amen. Thank you. Please rise with the prayers of the day. Mm-mm. <clears throat>
<clears throat> Trusting that God hears us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Shepherding God, you protect and guide us with your word. Lead your church into ever closer relationship with you, that we might better know your commands, hold fast to your decrees, and live in your law. Hear us, O oh God. God of the cosmos, heaven and earth bear witness to the splendor of all you have created. Bless the ground, trees, waterways, and skies with abundant life. Restore synergy between humankind and the natural world, that we may live in harmony with the world you have made. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace, you show solidarity with all who suffer. Bring an end to violence, war, discrimination, and all other forms of deadly hate, that we may experience your love through the power of justice. Hear us, O oh God. God of hope, you provide bountifully for all people. Use our lives to alleviate global injustice and eliminate poverty, that all benefit from the abundant gifts you pour out for your people. Hear us, O oh God. God of growth, you nurture this community, cultivate in us a spirit of service to one another and bless us in ministry that we share. Hear us, O oh God. God of our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, we give you thanks for our forebears in the faith who now rest in your eternal grace and love. Hear us, O oh God. Confident that you are able to accomplish more than we even dare to ask, we bring these prayers before you, believing in your saving grace revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and you are all welcome to the Lord's table if you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have a gluten uh, allergy, we have uh, gluten-free waivers, uh, but you have to indicate that when you go through the communion line. <clears throat>
Be seated. It's... If you would like to at this time, you can turn to your announcement section of your bulletin. Starting thing to highlight, if you are one of the youth going on our mission trip this summer, please come. We're going to be having a planning meeting on Wednesday at 8 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, so come and join us for that. Um, March 1st, we are going to have our first communion class um, after the second worship immediately. Um, if you have a fifth grader, please uh, be aware of that. And if you didn't do this yet, uh, you may contact Lexi, but I think everybody is lined up. Um, we have, for one of the high school mission trips that we are going, or for the ones that we're going on, we have um, an opportunity with the SDSU concession. That's always a great fundraiser for us. We're especially looking for some people, so if you might be interested in helping serve with us at that concession stand, um, we're helping with one of the track meets coming up March 6th and 7th. One of those, the 6th is a Friday, so if we could get some people that maybe would be interested in helping that day, that would be awesome. Um, it's great support of the youth. It's a lot of work right there the day of, but then you're done, and it's, it's awesome. So it's from 9 to 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. for that. So if you're interested, touch base with me, and we'll get you some more information. This is not my department, but um, I will lift it up anyway. VBS and day camp, uh, the plans are already in the making. And this year, it's really crucial that we get a lot of help, uh, because I think if I'm not mistaken, it may fall into your maternity leave time. And so we really need, if you want to have that, we need some people who will step up. If not, then we cannot pull it off, I think. But anyway, if you're interested, if you feel the call, uh, contact the board of ed or contact Lexi, especially Lexi. Yep. Anything else? No, nope, I think I'm good. You know, this uh, text that she, she preached about is very difficult for preachers, especially for Lutherans, and I think she did an incredible job. If she can preach about this, like this, she can tackle everything. Thank you. <clears throat> Please rise for the sending hymn, I will sing of the mercies, number 98. Go in peace, let your light shine.